and welcome to the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who podcast, episode 498. I'm Adam and delete. And here's Kirby Butler Sloan. We attack on three sides, above, between, below, oh, which is a direct quote from um, the five doctors. Yay. The above, between, yeah, below. All right. Thank part. you. But, um, I was, and then I can say Ben Shoveler. <laughs> Hello, I'm the doctor. Uh, yes, he does say that. Uh, well done. Yeah, yeah that's a round of applause. Too, so I, I, I thought I'd take, I'd take a stab in the dark with that one. What, one of my up. alternates was already used. I was going to go delete. I said that. Yes. Oh. Um, right, Lillian Robin has said. Lil, Lillian Robin has said off air whilst I was waiting for the show to start, which is now 15 minutes late, 16 minutes and 14 seconds. Is she says. Sorry I'm late. That's an odd angle, because the, so the camera angle that uh, the viewer is currently experiencing. And then she said boring, because um, I was waiting for to sort out the Ben situation. Uh, and then she said delete. Well, delete this episode and start again, go in the <laughs> other room and have a, have a nice glass of sherry, maybe? I don't know. Well, for the listener, uh, we are going to be reviewing Rise of the Cybermen and the second episode in the in the. Yeah, wait for it. The in Age the... of Steel. I <laughs> knew you couldn't resist it. Uh, yeah, so, so it begins with um, um, Trigger um, being all menacing and sinister while he's uh, what revealing. What do you mean, Trigger? And also uh, he hasn't uh, turned the focusing on, on his cameras uh, because uh, the, the blatantly obvious Cyberman is, is not in view just yet. But his little sidekick, <laughs> I do like the line when he says... Um, how are you going to do because he said he's going to tell the, the government or whatever and he said how are you going to do that from beyond the grave that's a, that's the quote i should have uh, used actually because i thought that was quite funny now what do you mean trigger trigger from only fools and horses <laughs> how am i supposed to know that because you the claim to be an anglophile the, Amer- the only other thing i've seen Just to uh, confuse that actor the americans is... and the australians a bit more yeah. The only other thing I've seen that actor in is uh, Harry Potter, where he no, played. No, he definitely David wasn't Tennant's Harry Potter. Potter. That was Daniel Radcliffe, um, Kirby. Just to break it to you, um, what? Daniel Radcliffe played um, Harry Potter. Um, this this actor played, played David Barry Crouch. Tennant's father. He played Barry Crouch. No, he played David yes. Tennant's father. Farty Crouch. Wow! So you do know then? Nonetheless, yes. I need to tell them. And if I don't. I'm sorry, sir, but it's my duty. I should have to inform them. And how will you do that from beyond the grave? <laughs> Love that line. From the under the grave. Sounds a bit he like Fozzie Bear. Says that, uh, like uh, in the underwater menace, the uh, crazy. Pardon? Whatever. <laughs> sorry, no, I was just turning the volume up on the speaker. But yes, yes, well, yes, I suppose it does actually. But yeah, um, so Trigger um, is a bit mean. Uh, he's uh, clearly, uh, even this early, uh, 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 sort of got something to do with the Cybermen. And they, they do give the game away somewhat with the title of the story, which is Rise well, of the Cybermen. What, what he should have done, what he, he got the broom out. That sounded really weird, Ben. It was. What well, I should have done, but da, 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 da. I'll tell you what. Hold on. I don't know if, if you'll lose me for a second, but I'm going to change my internet connection because this is rubbish. I can hardly hear you two. Have you? Got, it's like a one-man have, show. Have so. you um? Have you got one of those like telephone connection things? Yeah, with the, with the dial-up that goes, that sort of thing. No. Oh. I, I'm over my Wi-Fi, but because I'm so far away from the house at the moment, oh. in the uh, in the. Sh- but I thought the shed connection was quite good. Yeah, it's been good before. Hmm. Maybe he's maybe he's sh- changed sheds. Yeah, have you been out and well, allowed your wife? Better? Yeah, but have you been out and not allowed your wife to install lead lining to your shed? No, I don't need lead lining. I've got uh, I've got loads of great acoustic insulation oh. to sort it all out with when I play. <laughs> do, do you I'm have any there. yard? Do you have any backyard left after uh, having three sheds? Uh, there'll be enough for a couple of deck chairs if the sun shines, which it doesn't very often. Well, why don't you it does, just build, another, build another shed and then connect them all together? Well, I could do it. I could just have shed world. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, back to Doctor but, Who. Uh, 
Does that sound better now? Because I can hear you better now. Oh, it might do after a few moments of rest. I mean, for the the signal to rest. But I, I'm, I keep my fingers crossed. I can't remember what the original question was, actually, Ben, but that you were tr- attempting to answer. It was something to do with Trigger's broom. Hey, Trigger's broom? Yeah. What about it? Because you were oh, mentioning yeah, Trigger, yeah, yeah. which was completely confusing Kirby, because he had no <laughs> idea who Trigger is. And so I thought I'd throw in Trigger's broom to the mix... Just yeah. to confuse all the Americans even more. Yeah, and then I called uh, Barty Crouch, Barry Crouch, deliberately to throw Kirby offline. Anyway, back to where we were. So uh, we then joined, after the title sequence, uh, the, the slightly green-looking TARDIS crew, uh, who are having a bit of bantery conversation. And then there's a big bang, and the TARDIS Master? crash... Oh, for Christ's sake. Eight you, seconds. You completely stepped over the fact that uh, the Doctor and Rose just pulled on Mickey what uh, the doctor did to Leela in the very first story that where she was a companion uh, where she was doing the doing the yo-yo and she asked when she could stop because Thank she thought you. it was part of the magic Thank and so you. Mickey is holding this button down for 20 minutes yeah and <laughs> I thought it was funny I'm sure it was it wasn't a major part well, of the story but, uh, um, I mean, they they both took place in Doctor Who episodes. I'll give you that. <laughs> anyway, back to Doctor and then, Who. And then we have a a reference to uh, is it the Mind Robber? Yeah, I think it's the Mind Robber with the TARDIS dying. Okay. Although it doesn't it doesn't explode with uh, Zoe's butt. No, I wish it had done. It might take my mind off this. Right then, where are we going? <laughs> right. So yeah, so, so um, everything's going a bit haywire, and and then the, it lands and crashes at the time. The Doctor thinks that's the TARDIS, that the TARDIS is dead, uh, but obviously Mickey opens the door up and says, "No, that's London." Um, and um, London was Zeppelins. London was Zeppelins. Yes. I like the uh, oxygen mask. <laughs> they drop down. I quite like the, the 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 digital advert that Rose touches of of Pete and it sort of moves, which of course. Um, they haven't quite got that yet, but I'm sure they're not that far off it. Um, what people normally do with adverts is draw moustaches on them. Anyway, so she's a bit yeah, excited. The, uh, Master, the, yeah. this does look like it was very, very close. I remember mentioning this uh, nine years ago, and I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to get too deep into it right now. But they I'll look do. like they're on the <laughs> other side of the same bridge where uh, the Doctor and Adric were looking up at the Watcher in Legopolis. Possibly, does it, you you just have a trying to trying to sort of blindly reference as much Doctor Who that's not related to this story as possible. It's yeah, all Doctor it, Who, so therefore it's all it, related. Not entirely, no. It's like it's like you know when you when you try and do name dropping of famous people. Kirby's trying to get in as many episodes of Doctor Who as he can today. God. Anyway, quite rightly so, and to detract to distract me from uh, this particular feature, uh, Tim Drury. Thanks, computer, for doing that so slowly. Jury says, what episode are they doing this week? Well, we're attempting, and you wouldn't believe it, uh, but we're trying to do Rise of the Sidemen at the moment, uh, but it's more of Rising of My my Fury, because uh, I'm actually trying to review this story and spend a little no, bit of time... Oh, we did Fury w- from the Deep a long time ago. Uh, with the wife at some point. <laughs> this evening. Uh, and then he says, somewhere in a parallel universe, there's a less annoying Kirby. Then it wouldn't be a Kirby then, would Impossible. it? Impossible. Um, so anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so what would be the point in that? That's a very good question. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's, I mean, a, doc, I mean, that's well, a Doctor Who I was, episode I was itself. thinking earlier about my Sunday evening coming mm. on doing the podcast, mm. and I thought we're, we've got Adam, we've got me, and we've got the most pedantry person in the world. Mm. And I just think, you know, I look forward to talking to Kirby every week because no one pulls you up on facts like Kirby does. Anyway, back to Doctor Who. So Pete's no, no. Abbott, oh, we, Jesus we had Christ. 
<laughs> what happened the other week, Kirby, when I, I couldn't actually get on with the episode? I skipped to the end. You're about five seconds away from me to doing that. I can skip right the way to the end of the episode because I'm in charge. <laughs> but as I pointed out, what's the point in doing a podcast about an episode and then not reviewing it? Well, we're not reviewing it. I whole... keep, keep on starting a sentence and then it's, it's like, you know, when you get a, a, a DVD get with a, a scratch in it, it, it jumps back to the previous bit you were watching, you know. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, but it, it, it's... But, but it's like it gets there eventually, doesn't it? So, oh, it's it's yeah, but eventually, yeah, that's later. later on in the week, I've got the week off. Well, well the week well, off. There's no time limit then, is there? <laughs> well, there is. Um, the time limit set by She Who Must Be Obeyed, um, who uh, hinted very generally that uh, uh, I think she'd uh, rather surprisingly want to spend some of the evening with me. Oh, well, is no, none of her friends about. I'm her friend, sort of. And they've got the dogs are here and. And I'm hoping that one of them is not scratching at the door at the moment. And I've got a bit of wind. Ooh, bother me about. Right then, where do we get up? So, oh, God, that's um, about four and a half seconds in, I think. <laughs> where did I get up to? You got up to know. the point where Rose was... Uh, they just landed and Rose was having a look at the advert. Oh, yeah, she's getting all excited because she thinks it's her dad and the doctor says, it's not your dad. And, of course, later on, the story it's it's not your mum. Um... Anyway, so Pete's rather successful, uh, and he goes home with a bunch of flowers because he's creeping to Jack, who's wearing a, 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 posh, a posh gown and some rather interesting air, air pad, uh, AirPods, sorry, obviously invented uh, long before Apple actually invented them, which is quite interesting. And it's her 39th birthday, everybody, and um, he's in trouble for. I could get pedantic right now, oh, but God, I won't. Here we go. Well, you might as well. You've, 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 you've interjected, which rather implies that I've got yeah, well, little oh, choice. I, I'm not going to look up the exact birthdays, but she says she's got. She's supposed to be born on the same day as Cuba. Cuba Gooding is that his name? Junior. Yeah. Cuba Gooding Junior. Right, mm. and uh, the thing is, is that she also states her her birthday and it's a day off of cuba gooding juniors however it he could was be the born, same yes. on the, on the alternate th- uh universe so there uh right. cuba gooding jr was born on the 2nd of january 1968 mm. and jackie tyler oh jeez. oh i got him to go pedantic excellent oh, God. Uh, um well can we find jackie tyler i you bloody well hope not um, right, anyway, so yeah, they've had a little bit of domestic, and of course, Jackie First keeps... of February 1967. Thank you. Jackie keeps calling up Rose, uh, so when originally watching the story, we were expecting to see an alternate Rose, but then a little Yorkshire Terrier appears, uh, which is obviously leading to a slightly comedic moment later on in the tale. Um, meanwhile... Honestly, I thought it was hilarious. Meanwhile, Lumic... Um, is it Lumic? Have I got that name right? Yes. I'd make a change, wouldn't it? Uh, is uh, floating around in a you know, like an airship, uh, being all menacing with, with low camera angles, looking up his flaring nostrils and his sort of googly eyes, because he's being he's being uh, evil. And then um, he communicates. Other search engines are available. <laughs> and then he communicates directly with um, with Jackie via his, his little um, AirPods, AirPods, which on her they they create this cyber square thing around her, almost like a framing thing. With a little blue light on it, uh, but I noticed that they didn't do that for any of the other members of the public. They just had that they, they sort of were controlled just straight from their their earpod thingies. Master. AirPod. Oh, jeez. And and she said uh, for in the commentary that while filming, uh, instead of doing a freeze frame on her to do that, she just had to stay perfectly still, and then they did the animation. Uh, okay. Um, so you can see her moving a little bit. Anyway, so he. He uh, sort of gets the information he wants from her. Uh, the doctor and Mickey sort of go into the dead TARDIS while Rose sort of uh, just... It's sort getting better! Sort of eventually decides that she is uh, going to try and um, see her her not real dad. Uh, and then inside the TARDIS, little, a, little, a little bit of green appears. Uh, Lord Percy from Blackadder would have been absolutely thrilled to bits to see this bit of green. Um, uh, almost as thrilled as the Doctor was, because of course it meant the TARDIS wasn't dead after all. Now this chap, almost who... as pleased as Cuba Gooding Jr. would have been <laughs> in some of his earlier movie roles. Yeah. Anyway, the chap who plays uh, Lumix's uh, sidekick, he, he's—I'm um, pretty sure you met him, haven't you, Kirby? Yes. Hmm. 
I've, I've been on a little cruise with him inside of a hotel with him. All right. And, you only have uh, to do is say yes. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Andrew Cartmill. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, was I, I wasn't. I wasn't cyber converted. He's a very good friend of Colin Baker's, and he was um, sort of offered to me uh, uh, for FantasyCon when that happened once upon a time. I've met Colin Baker. You've met Colin Baker. Colin Baker. Yeah, not, <laughs> not just met him. Inter- interviewed him a couple of times actually. Yeah, well done. Um, Master, he didn't like I, me. Thank you for that. Yes. I, I he didn't like me. Am, I am uh, contractually obligated. To mention this because I mentioned it in the announcement for last week's uh, feedback, but I always love from the moment I saw this story mm. that the lorry where they do the uh, they convert the homeless people yes. says international electromatics on it. They're all. Pardon? Oh right, okay. I hadn't noticed that, but uh, it's a very nice little link. Thank you, Kirby. And um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, blown it. Oh, oh the, the reason Colin Spall is oh, in this. Oh, Colin Spall is in this because he's a good friend of uh, Graham Harper's, and Graham Harper is all, was also the director of the Colin Baker story that Colin Spall was in. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, Yes, yeah, so you're talking about um, Ben was trying to get out the words that he that Colin Baker didn't like him. How do you know Colin Baker didn't like you, Ben? Well, you know when you're just talking to someone and you just get the impression that you kind of, he kind of like he, he just didn't like me. Oh, that's a shame. I just, yeah, well, no, I, I wasn't that bothered about it. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know, I'm sure, sure you weren't. He, he was in my car, my old car, which I still have, which I'm going to be parting with soon. Colin Baker's been in my car. I he was had, on my stage. Has, have you had Christopher Ryan in your car as well at the same time as Colin <laughs> Baker? Oh, Christopher Ryan was lovely. He was a very nice chap. And, anyway. and, and the thing about Colin Baker, which I still can, can't get over, is the fact that like the third time I saw him, he recognised me. All right, thank you, Kirby. All right, then he recognised <laughs> me the second time he saw me, but uh, I suppose uh, that was because it was the second day of the convention. Right then, um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, Mickey and the Doctor... Uh, the doctor blows some, his uh, breath all over this green thing and it glows and um, the doctor and Mickey sort of are trying to talk Rose out of going to see Master. her not dad uh, but she runs off pretending she's doing something else yes the doctor says that he loses 10 years of his life yes, when he, he does, does that yes but if he's the the timeless child it's yeah. completely meaningless yeah he could be saying it just for the fun of it uh and he, well, he doesn't wasn't know the time he's the child. Time he child, doesn't so. also know that he's been, the time. It hadn't been child. written at that point, Kirby. It hadn't been written at that point. But he doesn't. Oh, God, where, where but did he? Oh, yeah. Stuck, yeah. Anyway, oh, no, um, not. meanwhile, uh, what's his name again? Pete meets up with the president of Earth. Is it Earth or Britain? Britain. Britain. President of Britain, who also looks exactly like the commissioner from Death in Paradise, which is. Uh, and that, that, that lodger from it's Rising Dam. Incredible, as well. that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, anyway. Tell me something. Something. There you go. Something if, in the if, way if, she made. If, 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 there's, oh, if there's a president of uh, Great Britain, why do the policemen's helmets still have the royal uh, crest on them? That's what I was going to say. Is a good, that's the best point you've brought up so far. So that's, this is going to be a momentous occasion. Well, it had to they, happen at some stage. Thank uh, you, the, sir. May I have another? You know what the answer to that is? Brandon Moore says, "Sorry, I'm late. I got stuck in a parallel world. Trust me on this." Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, if he's got stuck in a parallel world and made it back to this world, then yeah. surely he's been fracturing the dimensions between time, and we know how dangerous that yeah, can be. That's a very good point too. Anyway, uh, that's so. Not for- Meanwhile, oh yeah, the Doctor and Rose are wandering through the streets of London and so everybody stops because they're being sort of communicated via these um, AirPod things. Um, Apple has. Wouldn't it be dangerous if you just like? What if you're driving? No, you're going to get done in. I don't think the Cybermen <laughs> are pretty uh, bothered by that. Mickey, meanwhile, goes to visit his blind nan 
Uh, obviously, we forgot to mention that in the, the other universe, Blind Nan, uh, did she fall down the stairs or something? Anyway, she yes, the, something that Something Mickey like that. left behind and which led. To, she was got a bit of a violent streak. I think uh, uh, Blind Nan. She likes to lash out a bit uh, and uh, clobbers Mickey around the arm. In the commentary, uh, he says that she was hitting him very, very hard. In <laughs> well, he got a sometimes Man, acting. Maybe she knew that. things that other people didn't at that no. point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Anyway, so then we meet um, the obligatory Welsh uh, character, who's the, the driver of the, the get-out van, which just happens to have... Because they've, they've taken Mickey in, thinking he's Ricky. Uh, this uh, band of... What, what would you call them? Guerrillas or uh, sort of rebels? Rogues. Rogues, yes. Um, they're called the Preachers, and there used to be a, a podcast called Preachers Podcast. Ah, okay. Anyway, uh, Lumic, meanwhile, is is pleading to the president uh, that he he, um, that he wants to you know, infiltrate his cyber plan. Uh, the president says no, um, but they have already got some you know some layabouts, not layabouts, sorry, um, um, homeless people to turn into cybermen, and, and so he he starts or uh, this sort of process of changing these allegedly unwanted people into cybermen. Meanwhile, there's a party. Bums. Master? They're, they're bums, Adam. Bums, yes. Master? Bums. Yes. Later, in the second uh, story of this two-parter, the cybermen say they don't want people who are unwilling, uh, and yet... Uh, all the bums are unwilling. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Anyway, there's a party at the Tylers, because it's, as we said earlier on, Jackie's 39th party and the Doctor, who looks very good in his tuxedo, uh, bearing in mind uh, the uh, 13th Doctor wore a tuxedo uh, in uh, the first of the last series of Doctor, um, and Rose are waiting. Uh, and I tell you what, those those canapes do look really tasty. And they David do. Tennant, uh, go make some. David Tennant's manipulation of the champagne in um, baby sham glasses around the rooms is quite impressive, to be fair. He must have taken a bit of practice not to drop any of those. Um, he's an actor he's an he probably actor. practiced a lot they don't do a lot <laughs> anyway so Ro oh sorry Jackie comes down and has got, gets a big uh, sort of welcome for her birthday while more plotting behind the scene occurs because uh, um, they've now because they met the real Ricky uh, uh, in their little hideout um, uh, they strap Mickey to the chair half naked uh, and um, interrogate him and, uh, <laughs> and and Rose and the Doctor meets uh, the alternate Rose. Yeah, the dog. Rose isn't yes. particularly impressed by no, this, but, but the she, Doctor is, is, she is very she, amused. <laughs> I mean, she immediately um sort of we have the same sort of scene with Pete that we did in uh, Father's Day, uh, where she's sort of asking questions and sort of gushing at him, and um, then she meets Mum and upsets her Mum. Well, it's not actually a Mum, is it? But upsets Jackie by saying something and just while that's all kicking off a load of side men rock up and um not long after that the, the president gets uh, deleted and then everybody in the house starts getting deleted the doctor and rose leg it um pete just about gets out and um jackie gets caught and uh, it's uh, all hell breaks loose and um the doctor says um we surrender we we give in sort of thing and the side men nope nope we're going to kill you anyway because it's the end of the episode, and we need a cliffhanger. Oh, we we did that very quickly, and we actually got most of everything. That's very good. Thank you, Adam. Just don't be sarcastic. You did, you did speed through that. That was uh, that's because I was allowed to. All uh, right then, uh, you... Master. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the I remember an interview back when this first came out with the owner of the house. And uh, they replaced all of his windows with uh, balsa wood and uh, and can candy glass for breaking <laughs> breaking them. But he was still a little upset watching well, them film. As understandably the so. Windows. So anyway, the episode, second episode, they get rescued. Uh, I have to get to the oh, second episode. Hang on. Christ. No, I'm doing it now. They get rescued by a woman, a Welsh woman in a blue van, a, a daft van. Is it Eve Miles? No, the, no, <laughs> no, but the, it's a daft van. Obviously, the last letter's fallen off because obviously it's daft is what it should be saying. Um, and um, 
yeah, they get away in the van and they meet all the other little band of mercenaries, including Mickey um, and um, Lumic, who, who's um, sort of trying to manipulate things. Uh, but we've got to mention he's dying apparently, and uh, um, as, as the episodes proceed, we all are at him. He's <laughs> dying. Listen so to far. them; they're dying. R two, uh, curse my metal body! I wasn't fast yeah. enough. So anyway, <laughs> the Cybermen are wreaking <laughs> havoc around the streets, uh, sort of rounding up people for for their little cyber mission. And it's quite Party. funny that Mickey and Ricky also running away from the Cybermen, wearing exactly the same clothes, but very conveniently running on opposite sides of the screen, uh, which is quite handy for the special effect uh, required to make two knolls. And I do know how you know the difference between the two. Uh, The the, uh, Ricky uh, wrinkles up his nose a bit and Mickey opens up his eyes a bit wider, a bit just sort of a... (laughs) I thought that he did an excellent job at being both Hang on, hang on. Have I said he didn't do an excellent job of characterising... No, well, I'm just saying that's how we we see the difference between them. Uh, uh, flared nostrils for evil Ricky. Well, he's not actually evil, is he? He's just tough. Um, and sort of or thin lips as well, because that's what tough people do, don't they? They flare, flare their nostrils and they make their lips all thin. Um, and then uh, big, wide open eyes for um, Mickey uh, to make him look a bit more innocent. Master? And, oh, jeez. You know when uh, the doctor and... and alternate Pete and Rose and everyone are crouched behind those big uh, rubbish bins. Yes. And the the Cybermen had come out of a little alley. That's yeah. the exact same alley that uh, the Ninth Doctor and Rose appeared in at the beginning of the um, the first of the, the uh, Captain Jack stories. Fascinating. Uh, I should actually so get a. Uh, the doctor runs across that cat. I should re- should really get a, a sound bite of Spock going fascinating for these instances, but never mind. Where do we get up to? Um, uh, all right. So well, yeah. So, you know, if I ever come over to to Britain, I'm going to be spending two weeks at least going and yeah. finding all these spots. Yes. Um, it will be okay. ironically the same two weeks I uh, decide to go on a trip to Australia. Yes. Right. Where do we get up to? Um, yeah. So that Mickey and Ricky uh, have trying to run away from the Cybermen, but they get cornered down a side street. Um, Mickey is able to get over this um, this wire fence. Ricky, on the other hand, not so lucky. Deleted. But it's funny when 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 Ricky gets deleted, Mickey's uh, face changes. He, he, he suddenly flares his nostrils and makes his lips go all thin, um, and off he goes. And then. Um, Lumic, um, his, show, his little sidekick, Tiff, um, Mr. Spall, um, he's shown that he he, he's, he was fed up with the whole thing and um, tries to actually scupper Lumic, but um, ends up getting done in in the process. And um, yeah, then Ricky, sorry, Mickey rejoins uh, the rest of the mercenaries and Rose and Pete. And, of course, um, Geordie Mercenary is very, very upset that Ricky dies. And he holds it against what he thinks to be his um, sort of wimpy Mickey. Uh, So then we find that um, that, that the cameras start uh, sort of descending on the the ultimate sort of lair of uh, Lumic, which is a great big humongous building, uh, where their next part of the mission is to actually get to infiltrate it and... um, get on the inside and stuff um so mickey and his new best friend uh geordie bloke uh are given the mission to fly the um the, the airship uh to the uh the lair the doctor and welsh um driver woman uh go on a little walk uh, in the sort of dungeons of the building where uh have a nice i was chat. looking up something did you mention that uh that Lumic gets converted? Not yet, because you haven't got to that bit yet. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah so, you, you, you've been, you've gone past it. Well, can I talk about this bit first? Anyway, the Doctor and uh, a Welsh driver woman have a conversation about her life, because and then well, as soon as we, she has that conversation about her life and her husband and stuff like that, we know that she's going to be dead within the next three or four minutes. Uh, Lumic, meanwhile, has I, uh, said I didn't that he, even give her that long. <laughs> Uh, Lumic, um, meanwhile, has told the Cybermen that he's ready to uh, be converted um, 
uh, on his last breath. So the so no, the, what? No, he completely objects. No, to, no, no, no. That's first, not. First of all, a Colin no. Spout attempts to kill him. Yes, he but then pulls all his wires out. As uh, he's dying, mm. the Cybermen say to him, oh, "We can take your pain away," and he's he starts objecting. To, no, he doesn't. He said he, he's ready the, on the his last is, is breath. The whole reason the Cybermen exist is to convert him. Yeah, but he did say he's ready to. He, when he's he hasn't got his body's gone. He's he's quite happy to become no, a Cyberman. He, he says did. no. We're not yet ready. Yes, because he wasn't ready. He wasn't on the verge of death at that point. He implied that when he was his body was about to pack in because they, they said right from the beginning of the story that he's dying. That he he anyway I'm not going to dwell on this no, part of it. No 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 yes, no. Yes 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 yes. Um, who's right? Uh, Me. Thank me. you very much. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, well, hold on a minute. There's yeah. three of us here, and I haven't had my vote yet. Go on, then. and uh, I'm very I'm very sorry, Kirby, but I agree with Adam. Yay! Lumix okay. says okay. Lumix, put, he's starting to die. Yes. And. Uh, he's the starting to say you're in pain. We can remove pain forever. <laughs> Lumic then says, oh, "No, dear. not yet. I'm not yet ready." The Cyberman says, "We will give you immortality." And then Lumic says, "I've told you. I will upgrade only with my last breath." And then yes, the that's what I said. Cyberman says, "Then breathe no more." Yes, so he did say that he'll do it on his last breath. Yes, so I'm right. Thank you, Ben. He's going reluctantly. <laughs> Right, so I'm just having a camera issue. The the memory card is running out, so I just had to uh, resurrect the, the recording uh, of the video. See what I'll do for our viewer. Right, anyway, so all hell is breaking loose on the, the big cyber lair. They've got Rose, they've got... Oh, well, they, Rose and Peter de- pretending that they're, you know, they're hypnotised by this these sort of ear pod things because they've got dummy ones in their ears, you see. Uh, so they pretend that they're... Because they're on the search for Jackie. Little do they know, it's a bit late for Jackie, unfortunately. Um, and as almost the same time, they, they meet Cyber Jackie. And out of, she was a bit surprising. Out of all these millions or thousands of Cybermen, they just happened to bump into Jackie Cyberman. Master. Oh, no. It's a science fiction fantasy. Oh, TV for God's sake. Now. It wasn't even worth women holding breath for that one. Um, the same <laughs> I've sort of time. I've got to say, on that point, I definitely agree with Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> The Doctor and um, Welsh driver woman uh, meet uh, a Cyberman who is because he's he's turned he's found their sort of emotion inhibitor thing, uh, and this Cyberman's a bit unconscious after um, sort of being zapped, and um, we find out who that person was, uh, and then the Doctor just kills them, just puts them out of their misery. Um, it was the, the night before her wedding. Yeah, sad, wasn't it? But the Doctor kills her. No, no, He's no one's disagreeing with me. <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile, um, as all this stuff's going off, the Doctor, um, c- oh, yeah, communicates with rather subtly with Mickey up in the airship, um, and uh, while well, we the big reveal of Lumic Cyber Person and his big throny chair thing, who's now Cyber Controller, hasn't quite caught the the, the belly, but uh, they, you know, maybe can develop that later. And um, yeah, just moving forward a little Com- bit. Cyber controller complete with seeing his brain the way it should be. Yes, indeed. Oh, you've got to you've got to see the brain of yes, the leader. Have. I, I mean, remember this. The, is, isn't that the, 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 that's, that's, that's written into science fiction? The folklore, action sure, figure of sure this particular is. character was really quite cool. Anyway, the Doctor manages to get um, Mickey to put this code in and scrambles all the the cyber people's brains, allowing. Uh, some explosions to go off and a little bit of escaping to do onto the roof. And he does a really... Cause they, um, uh, Geordie, but Geordie the bloke, thing. hang on, Geordie bloke wants to, to get away, but Mickey insists they go back and try and rescue them. Yes? Master? I forgot yeah, to mention the, about the, the bloke the, woman, the, woman L- getting done. Lumix airship just happens to have a receptacle that Rose's phone from a different universe just it fits into exactly right. to do all this. So it's a science fiction fantasy TV show, <laughs> and without it, and without it, and it would have been a problem. And he from the 18-yard line with a screamer <laughs> to the top corner. 
Um, yeah, so he drops his sort of rather robust um, uh, step ladder thingy. Uh, so the Doctor and Rose and Pete climb up it, and a Cyberman as well, which just happens to be the Lumix Cyberman. But we thought he'd got it done in. Um, anyway, that he and we we thought that he couldn't move because he was on his on his big throne chair. Yes. Yeah. But obviously, he finished the big poo poo that he was doing on that throne, and <laughs> decided he was able to. Um, Jump, climb up this um, this step ladder. Now, the doctor throws down his sonic screwdriver to. Um, that to really scared Pete. me. I thought that the doctor would that uh, that Pete would drop it. I'm sure he'd get another one. They, they, they used to be on sale at Toys R Us uh, when they used to be at Toys R Us. Uh, funny enough. Anyway, but he um, he doesn't drop it. But he, he he's supposed to be using the setting to to burn through the rope, which doesn't actually burn through until one frame of it just snapping, which was a bit. Bit strange. So it, it, it doesn't work on wood, but it works on rope, apparently. Yes. Well, rope isn't wood, and it's a science fiction fantasy TV program. Okay. Anyway, um, but and also it's, he cut through one slat, uh, and that was enough to send the Cyberman, uh, Cyber Trigger, uh, flying into some rather yeah, he, appropriate he, explosions. Yes. He cuts. He cuts through one rope, and the other rope happens to break at exactly the same height. You, yeah. Were well, you sure it broke? He just didn't lose his balance and fall. Oh. No. Yes, anyway. it broke. You can see it split. Okay. Anyway, so Rose, uh, yeah, well, that's what the point I was trying to make. I, that, that was a bit silly, but it's a science fiction fantasy TV show. So that, exactly. Really there you go. Anyway, so the the TARDIS is uh, it's been repaired after they've spent a bit of time there for this sort of green thing to regenerate. This almost almost like kryptonite. Uh, apparently, the TARDIS now powered by some sort of kryptonite. And Rose sort of hints to Pete that he she might be his daughter from another universe. And Mickey decides to stay behind. I was very disappointed when I, I watched this story originally, and uh, they decided to leave Mickey behind. Um, the Doctor's quite pleased. He didn't try and stop him or persuade him not to, uh, so even though he's out of place in the alternative universe. And and there's and there's the deleted scene where uh, we find out that the other bloke uh, happened to be Ricky's lover. The A. Eh? The what? The Geordie what? boat? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's, it's on the DVD and the Blu-ray. Is it? Oh dear. Okay. Anyway, so then Rose and the Doctor get back to our universe, and there's a big re- reunion scene between Rose and Jackie, who's a bit confused as to why she's getting such a big hug off her daughter. And that's essentially the end of the story. I think I deserve a uh, a round of applause for getting through that uh, within 35 minutes. And that, not a sarcastic round of applause. Thank you very much, Mr. Shoveler. No, I'm, I'm waiting for other, other people to join in. I can't do a round of applause by myself, uh, can I? I mean, if, if everyone listening was clapping as well, then that would have sounded like, like a yes. of hole full of people. All right, the yeah, Lillian yeah. Robin everyone, says, everyone you claps. mean, hang on. Lillian, Louder, everybody, what? everybody listening, no matter when you're listening, well, yeah. what time it is, what day it is, what year it is, because you might be listening to this Jeez. way in the past, which is our future. Yeah. What? <laughs> then, all, all clap now. All clap, Adam. I do believe in fairies. I do believe in fairies. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> so can you now hear, Adam, in your head, thousands of people clapping simultaneously um, no i can hear a, I a large we a large degree of sarcasm and uh, gap filling that is not really required um oh, okay eh, where are we where are we hold on what? i can hear andy nanny clapping <laughs> little robin says and, you mean and... hang on what uh, <laughs> i love it when you get stroppy it's so funny what i'm not sure <laughs> Oh, uh, that, this is about the closest I can find to applause. Song by Lady Gaga. Um, right, Elian Robin says, uh, you mean the alley in the Doctor Dances Empty Child episode? And then a round of applause from Lillian, a very appropriate round of applause uh, from Lillian. I've You're got this. kidding. What, okay. see? There you go. There's, there's... Oh, yes. I think that went on for way too long. No, it's yes. exactly the right length of time. Um, and it's very um, appropriate for what you were saying earlier on about uh, the, the whole of the universe giving me a clap. Not the clap. <laughs> you should be so lucky, sir. Uh, anyway, right, so... Uh, so oh, yes, what did I thought of think of this story? Oh, so I, it was nice to get back to a, a, a story that had a bit of a cliffhanger in it. And nice to see the revamped Cybermen. I did like their, their choreography of their 
sort of very much um because obviously the Cybermen and the Daleks were sort of based on the Reich when they were there marching and stuff like that. Yes. It, was, it was sort of even more exaggerated with these these Cybermen and the camera Was that the second, third or fourth Reich? Uh, I don't know. A fourth, is it? I don't know. Anyway, no, but, the um, third. Or was it the third? third, okay. the, third. the fourth. Well, this one, therefore, the Cybermen would have been the fourth, wouldn't it? But bearing in mind, this in this alternative universe, I think they implied that uh, Britain lost the war anyway. Um so maybe it was initially uh, run by German or German powers. I don't know. Anyway, so these these Cybermen are shot from really cool angles, right down low, uh, as the the four or five uh, actors in Cybermen suits, including friend of the show they John Davy. Um, they they did a very good job of, of multiplying them to make it look like many. Um, I I liked the. Uh, I intro- believe this is before uh, he was he was uh, Cyberman and stuff. This is there. This is Paul Casey is the main. Yeah, okay, but he may have been one of the nine other Cybermen. Could have been. I'm not. I quite bet sure. he was. I'm pretty sure he he showed me a picture of him uh, in, in the original Cyber. Doesn't matter anyway. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, it does. Have... It um, all matters. No, it doesn't. Um, it's all matter. Talking about camera angles, I just like I like the the way the camera angles were were shot. I also like the the new, the introduction of the word delete as the cyber the Cybermans exterminate. And they even used, uh, for old times' sake, the word, as is Lumix, saying, um, excellent. Uh, which excellent. Was, which was a nice little throwback to, <laughs> to the uh, the wonderful, um, uh, whose name I forget for the moment, David... Um, that was me doing a guitar lick, by the way, after Curtis yeah, said excellent. You're not supposed to lick a guitar, because you can get electric shocks from doing that if it's obviously plugged in. Um, yeah, so yeah, I quite enjoyed this story. It's um, I didn't like the fact we lose Mickey, um, and but on the we whole, don't lose him. We do we well. We, I liked him view. being in the TARDIS crew because it it was another dimension. Also, like the fact that him and the Doctor seem to be building a bit of a relationship, and then uh, off he goes. But yeah, I, I quite like this story. I think uh, this uh, the, the the tenth Doctor is really sort of coming into his, his stride now with this particular story. I know it's halfway through, but he's really the way he is for the rest of his time. And um, ah, not bad at all. What do you think about it? The Kirby. I really enjoy this one. Uh, it's, this is one of the, uh, well, practically any of the first three or four seasons of, of new who hmm. I can pick up and watch at any time. But this is, in particular, one of my absolute favorites, but partly because of all of the throwbacks, yeah. all the references to to old Who as well. Oh, jeez. I'll get a bit bored with throwbacks, but it was all right in this story. I don't, and really? I'm the one who, whose opinion you asked. <laughs> okay. That's it. Thank you, Kirby. So what do you think of this one then, Ben? Yeah, it's a very good episode, uh, as Ker- Kirby just said. Um the first four ep- uh, first four series of New Who, you could just pick most episodes at any time and just watch them time and time and time again. And this is uh, one of the better ones. Um, you know, well, next week's is not. Be quiet, <laughs> Kirby. We'll, we'll we'll deal with that next week. Yes. Right now, mm. you know. No, it's it's an excellent episode. I'd say that the Cybermen, the return of the Cybermen, the whole delete thing, the noise that they made, the st- yeah, yeah, I love was that. They, you know that that is what it's about, isn't it? That 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 that's their U uh, USP, uh, yeah, USP, unique selling point, isn't it? Their stompiness. Yeah. That was their scary point. Yeah, and they were great. It was great to see them back. Uh, Tennant was obviously excellent. He was. Uh, it was lovely to see Pete Tyler uh, and Rose strike up their relationship, and yeah, because that's lovely. Because it's just the whole what could have been. You know, Rose never got that and because of the Doctor. Not only did she get to weirdly help her dad die, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she then got to spend time with him. All right, it wasn't him, but it was him. You know, and yeah. you know, she obviously got confused about you know how it wasn't him because it obviously is. It's just a different dimension of him. And I thought that was lovely. I do like that whole thing. Uh, as for the losing Mickey, wow, you know what? I think that was obviously written in for the story arc, wasn't it? Because yeah. he had to go or he couldn't come back. So um, it's a shame. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he—he he really. How, what episode was this? Five and six, six and seven. 
I'm sure. So it's was... absolutely essential to uh, for the season finale. Yeah, okay, exactly. And which he, is a double he, header. And he so would he... if he hadn't stayed in that universe, they would have lost. Exactly. Okay. And so, and he's actually only not in it for four or five episodes there. Yeah. For, for he comes back for the double header, so he's not actually ever out of it for that long. And the episodes mm. that he's not in. I can't remember what they are. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure over the next couple of weeks I'll be reminded. But excellent episodes. Um, Cybermen were brilliant. And, uh, yeah, he easily watched time and time again. Indeed. Right then, Kirby. Uh, now you can move on to your favourite section, the humongous uh, list of feedback that you've had via your uh, request. <laughs> we didn't have a lot. I'm sorry. So what are you talking well, about for a week? Isn't oh, well, even, even though, I, even though, yeah, I mean, I'm going back to the, the previous week as well, but yes. let's see. Uh, hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I was, I was looking at the wrong one. Okay, uh, okay so from a week ago. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to go back to another one because uh, Andy Nunny tried to get in ahead of time yeah. and he ended up causing some uh, feedback there so on the 22nd okay. Andy said are we doing both Age of the Cybermen and the Rise of Steel this week to which the answer would be yes well no because that's wrong those are oh, not God, right yeah. titles anyway and also, Tim, that would have been Tim last Drury week says event, so. yes yes Tim Drury says I think the pattern is yeah to do the two parters together Yes. Uh, someone named Adam Pearson says yes. <laughs> is, he the, is he the illustrator? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and then Alan T. Butcher becomes pedantic and says, no, I'm definitely sorry. not. What? It's Rise of the Cybermen and the Age oh. of Steel this week. Okay. Uh, Andy says, that's bizarre. My post has been changed. Uh Rob Lansdowne oh, that says, old not sure it's legal to watch Mickey episodes anymore. Right. Uh, Lillian <laughs> Robbins says, then we will watch a Ricky episode instead. <laughs> um, it's like you're all there, isn't it, in a different world? It's, it's, uh, yes. You're, under the, you're just there in a different name. You're all of them. You're arguing with yourself. <laughs> Uh, Robert Wentz Jr. says reminded me of another show that may have got its idea from Doctor Who and he's referring to uh, Fringe which is an excellent show by the way yeah what are you talking about the uh, the reunion of Fringe uh, that was uh, on Sky One uh, this week that was yeah quite... I really did like that I mean yeah. I was you probably got we James, oh, Corden. About, that out. James Corden was a bit annoying. Series eight, I think, was probably the best, and then after yeah. that, you know, at least they all stuck around for all the ten yeah. series, though. So but what no, I haven't seen the reunion. So I can search oh, for it's it. really good, Ben. It's really good. I enjoyed that. Oh, I'm gonna wait. I'm waiting until next Saturday. It's very moving as well. Uh, young, youngest thought was over it. I'm not going to get any spoilers, but there's a couple of get a box of tissues ready. Not for, no fringe, for not friends. No, oh, I sorry. really don't. What? Oh, did we misunderstand for comedic purposes? You actually had me excited that there, there was a <laughs> fringe. Like, like I care about people crying in Friends. Seriously, that's just going to make me just want to spark no, forward. Uh, Elliot bits. Gould just, in the audience and stuff. It was very good. And But what got yeah, me was yeah. David Beckham appearing on it. I thought, what the hell has he got to do with... Yeah, is, he might as well get Prince Harry on it. Anyway, right, carry on. Anyway, let's carry okay, on. With now, now to last week, my request for uh, feedback... Oh, I thought you'd already done that. No, that was that was Andy Nunny trying to get in ahead of time. No. Alexa, um, Alexa, front room light on. Okay. All right, carry on. I'm lit up now. Hang on, my my A L E X A just told me that she can't find a device called front room. Right, Adam. Is this uh, Brandon? Okay, hang on, Brandon Moore says, Adam, did you read my earlier comment? I wasn't paying attention. Uh, for, uh, the idea uh, comment was sorry I'm late I got stuck in a parallel world trust me on this yes is the answer it just got read again uh, Lily Robbins said yes he read it <laughs> Brandon Moore said maybe I got ears of steel and then Robert Vence Jr. says hi everyone see more oh no I've got to click on that uh, oh it's nothing to, it's nothing there it just says hi everyone <laughs> okay uh, now uh, hey uh, Alexa we... front room light off oh thanks for that Ben <laughs> Did it work? 
No, it didn't. No, but uh, uh, anyway. I'm watching on the video feed. I was hoping to have plunged you into <laughs> darkness. <laughs> so what you need to do is I forget what he ca- what uh, Master calls his uh, heater, but you tell it to turn the heater on. Mm. That might not work Sassy. as it's not actually the the, the um, um, digital pluggy thing that it was originally plugged into it broke. So that that, that would be uh-huh. you would be saying. Uh, things for no reason carry on kirby anyway uh when i posted for the actual feedback last week it was after andy so i said yes both of them together andy if only you've been patient enough to wait for my feedback request uh andy oh, says ah andy. ah but kirby i had to get the ironing done before going out uh, say, uh, say ironing again. Ironing. <laughs> and uh, I Why can't said, Americans say ironing? Ironing. I said I had to wake up over on the other side of the pond and find the picture and edit it. And Andy says yes, but some of us get up in the morning. <laughs> Robert Wentz Jr. Uh, again makes a reference about fringe, not friends. Uh, I point out the combination the the five doctors reference the and five doctors were in friends apparently so apparently um ant-man was in friends as well i didn't even know that maybe he was married to phoebe apparently i, I must have been robert stuck, I must admit, I must jr. Really... sorry robert wince jr oh sorry. he was in friends was he review review of rise of the cybermen slash the age of steel the doctor rose and mickey land in a parallel world we see the birth of the cybermen Torchwood is mentioned twice and will be taken down yes. on Pete's World later on. Yeah. We get Rose the Dog and a Ricky Pete's Mickey duo. World. Pete's World. Party time. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry. No, you're not. No, I know. <laughs> a better story from Mickey. Like I've the got line, my socks on. Just thought I'd pass it on. Like the line, I'm not the tin dog. A ragtag team stops Lumic and the Cybermen, but only temporary. Mm-hmm. They, they will be back. They'll be back. But not Lumic, just the I'll seven. be back. Uh, Mickey stays behind to help his parallel world grandmother. Every time I watch the show Fringe, F-R-I-N-G-E, do, 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 it do, reminds do, do, do. me of this story in the John Courtney <laughs> story. No, mine sounded better. More really. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kirby. Oh, he's putting John, himself on mute again. Oh, no. <laughs> and the John Pertwee story, I'm assuming he's talking about the one where the drilling to the mantle and everything destroyed. That's I what that she has said. What's that called? Uh, the Inferno. Oh, Inferno, Inferno, yes. That's a I love that. Story. That story is brilliant. It is indeed. Uh, then he continues, warning, spoiler for Fringe, F-R-I-N-G-E. <laughs> Turns out, down the line, they have problems jumping between worlds, like Fringe, (laughs) F-R-I-N-G-E. I don't remember them having alternate universe, (laughs) unless unless that's what they were referring to, by Joey and Chandler's flat. Maybe that was an alternate universe. Well, yeah, when, when, when Joey wore all Ch- Fr- Ch- uh, Chandler's clothes at all at the same time was uh, a very amusing scene. I'm lunging. I'm lunging. Oh, yes, I'm lunging. lunging. <laughs> he was going commando, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but surely that would only affect one pair of trousers. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, Kirby, carry on. Robert West Jr. <laughs> continues... It was an okay story. My rating for both is a 3 out of 5 out of 5. 3.5 out of 5. Uh, and then he posts a picture. I don't know what that's a picture of. Oh, I don't know either because I'm not looking at it. I was, I was relying on you to know everything uh, in, 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 the usual, in the usual way. So uh, Yeah, I don't recognize who those people are. They might be from Friends. I don't know. Um... <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what I'm looking okay. at. Oh, I've got a bling come through. Oh, some stuff is coming through on the live feed. We have um, uh, 
Yes, Brandon Moore says A L E X A front light off. Uh, Alexa front light off. Now and then he says uh, Ant Man was friends, but can but you can you couldn't see him. Ah, very good. Yes, and then he said the twenty megabyte fringe podcast. Oh bugger! I pressed the wrong button. Uh, that would have been quite amusing if I was able to do that correctly. Um, you need me to go dong 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 Essentially, a bit like this. Oh, I press the wrong button again. Alexa, front light off. Oh dear, someone's got a. Sounds like they got laryngitis. Um, <laughs> I was trying not to. Is that it? Look fine. Oh, no, there's done? more. Someone, oh, there's jump. more. Oh god, carry on. Neil James. Yes. Rise of the Cybermen. The Age of Steel. Delete. Delete. <laughs> delete. I wish I could delete this story. Parallel worlds always <laughs> bore me. Uh, the whole urban slash industrial aesthetic is dull and ugly. Mm. I adore Roger Lloyd Pat's comedy work. But yes. This performance is uh, panto. It's essentially what he was doing in this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I liked Pete Tyler's story in Father's Day. They should have left it alone. No. The Mickey Ricky thing isn't clever, interesting, uh, or fun. Yes, it is. The new Cybermen are. Uh, wait until you. Wait until I read uh, Roberts. The other Roberts. Uh, our Roberts uh, feedback. Yeah, just say anyway. Robert. That'll do. Yes. The uh, the new Cybermen are all far too in sync. The Dali catchphrase was a dumb idea. And no, it wasn't. I don't like the tenth Doctor wearing a tuxedo. Jody Whittaker, <laughs> not so much I'd rather rather that than nothing at all, like he does in um, in when he becomes a Doctor Donna. Carry on. But you know he's wearing a tuxedo as a disguise. Yes, a cunning uh, both disguise. Episodes, both episodes are well directed. Well, there's a reason for that. Mm. And Jackie Tyler looks delightfully booby in her birthday dress. She does. Dress. That, that was one of the things I forgot to mention that I quite enjoyed. But I find this two-parter pretty painful to watch. Aww. One star out of five. Oh, Neil. Oh, and Good. in in both sets of uh, commentaries, which for some reason they have different sets of people doing commentaries for episode one, ep- episode two, everyone mentions that dress. Splendid. <laughs> so, uh, Robert Wins Jr. says, uh, Neil got a couple coming up that's going to get a one-star rating. Yeah, okay. Uh, Neil says to Robert Wins Jr., I think I can deli- deliberately, definitely guess one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert Wins Jr. says to Neil, LOL, you would probably be right. Uh, Andy Nunny sends a, a GIF sending virtual hug loading. Oh, um, have you uh, had your... Uh, oh, that's, latest, that's for uh, you, Uh Adam for last week. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, with, with I, I shall explain if someone reminds me to do so. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, uh, and Robert Wentz Jr. also sends his condolences, as does Dave Cooper. Yeah, now, well, nice to this week's. Oh, uh, hey. Uh, that this was week. just last week. Now I've oh, get okay. Well, no, before you go on with this week's, we have uh, stuff coming through on the live feed. Uh, Pick from Fringe uh, says Robert Wentz <laughs> Uh, um, Christian Basil says That's podcasting royalty. I haven't got a, a yes. I haven't got a, a jingle for that. Uh, it says I'm beginning to think that these are just voices in your head. And um, yeah, so am I actually. And then he says it's Ricky. Didn't know he washed these stenders. And Lauren Nick says a different angle, Adam. Yes, it's. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. Actually, it makes me look even fatter than I actually am because you can see my chins. Um. Yeah, you may continue, Kirby. Um, I've got to find it. Oh, oh, while you're doing it. Oh, here I'll, we go. Here oh. we go. Hang on, uh, before Neil you start. J. Before you start. Before you start. Before you start. Wait. Uh, I, hang on, Jen. I just wanted to say, um, you know, we were talking about the the Friends uh, reunion that's uh, currently. Oh uh, yeah. All right. Hey, shut hey, up. Hey, um, I don't remember that. <laughs> but there's a very charming podcast. reunion you might want to watch, not so much a reunion, a, a tribute on Channel 4 of a, one of the greatest British comedy series of all time, Friday Night Dinner. Uh, it celebrates uh, its 10 years, or it only did six series. Nah. Uh, it's really good, and it's a really nah. lovely, lovely little um, uh, 
look back on the ten years of uh, nah. six series of Friday Night Dinner. I'm wrong I'm tune. Fan. Yes. I'm not a fan of that because I of, love uh, it. What's his name at um, the in between us? Um, yes. What? I don't. Yes. Uh, Simon Bird. Bird. Yeah. Don't you like him? Yeah. I don't like the fact that. <clears throat> excuse me. He uh, he plays exactly the same character. <laughs> he uh, he exactly does the same actually. way, <laughs> and he's incredibly. It's t- not the fact he's typecast. He's just he, he can do one thing, and he's, he's such a one trick <laughs> pony. And it works in the in betweeners. But then when he went and did it in a, another program, it's just like no, click off. I said click off, by the way. In case well, for those people who do like Friday Night Dinner, uh, it's a good program to watch Channel Four, uh, and it's probably on yeah. more for. And back to Kirby. Well, uh, never mind, because when I looked at what I posted last week, uh, the, yesterday, for feedback, we get Neil James repeating his feedback from the week before, exactly word for word, and then Robert Wood Jr. also <laughs> says, my review is on last week's feedback. <laughs> yeah. And then I posted the two links to the two Tardisodes, and then there's Ian Kirk. Um. Oh, so is that it? Oh, good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was expecting to be longer. We still got a lot of feedback. It's just that it took three posts to go through it all. And Lillian Robbins says, I already mentioned that angle. Don't worry, it'll never happen again. And we can move on to the rest of the feedback. Oh, apart from the um, podcasting uh, royalty, uh, maybe I should get the Her Majesty the Queen's um, theme tune that used to be on the BBC many years ago. Or should I just play God Save the Queen? But that wouldn't be saying... Something royal, a bit royal, bit of music. Uh, maybe a theme tune to the royal family. Or um, maybe just a fanfare or something. I haven't got a fan. Oh, have I? I guess I've got a fanfare. That's a really good one. Fan. F- How do you spell fanfare? What's the difference between, what's the difference between a fanfare and a funfair? What? Um, <laughs> if you want an explanation. What's this one? Then um, <laughs> we really do live in massively different continents, don't we? That's supposed to be a fanfare according to my sound effect line. That that seems to be more like um less of a, a royal fanfare, more of a King Kong fanfare. Yeah. I tell you That's what, actually the... the beginning of a piece of music called Fanfare for the Common Man. No, this is Fanfare oh, yeah, for the Common Man. So I'll use that one. So <clears throat> and a comment on the live feed from Christian Basil, a podcasting royalty. He says not to be outdone. The Golden Girls had a reunion. It's just a picture of Betty White on a no. porch swing smiling. And then... Oh, right. Says, I was going to say, most of them are dead now, surely. Yeah. Brown Wall says, I, sh- I should have waited. I apologise for not waiting for the punchline. Oh, <laughs> magic! Now, what's happened? Uh, well, because I've let Wait, him in... Uh, I've, Look at the live feed. What it, it happened? It's again. a long story. Now you won't see it on the live feed because of the camera angle. But because I had to find oh. the the wires for the speaker, I pulled everything out and then didn't put it all back in again. Of course, when I opened the door up and let the dog in, everything just hit the deck. So I'm blaming him. Oh, well, you, you've I, got I a deck in your house instead of a floor. What? Yeah, what are you on about? I can beat that, Adam, because my uh, my shed roof fell in earlier because because of the moving around of the sheds. It's now in the hot part yeah, of the garden. I've heard you're not really supposed because... to move sheds around an awful lot. Which shed? First, uh, second, well, third? No, well, it's, it's the first shed. It's my original <laughs> proper my shed, which I'm still in, but it's in a different place, which is in a really sunny part of the garden. It was really hot today, and it must have been about 40 degrees in here. And the roof, because it's all stuck up with sticky tape, all fell down. And now it's being held up because I've removed all the shelving from behind me, you see, mm. um, which is in the new top shed. And it's currently the roof's currently being held up by three bits of wood that are kind of like holding up themselves. It's a fantastic mm. design, but if uh, I suddenly go all quiet, it's because the roof's caved in again and I'm covered in the Okay, well, well, we'll bear that in mind and call the emergency services. Uh, um, Kirby will be on standby to, uh, to call the emergency services if needed. Back to the show. You're being sarcastic now. No, Lillian Robbins says, Yawn, the 20 megabyte shed podcast. Um, Oh, yeah. I've got loads more to come. (laughs) Right then, we've got uh, Terry Miles has sent something in, so I'm going to have to send to one of you guys to read out. But in the meantime, I have this from Brandon Moore. Who the hell do you think you are? It's staff. 
You're nothing but staff. I like that. Good evening, 20 Motorbike Podcasters. This Hello. is Mr. M with some feedback for Rise of the Sidemen and The Age of Steel by Tom McRae. And some audio feedback this time. Thank you. Don't worry, Adam, you haven't scared me off. Not good. Yeah, anyway, I'm sure it will happen at some First point. First time that's ever happened. It's the genesis of the Sidemen, but this time in a parallel world. I think it was an interesting concept to give us a parallel world story, and it was an interesting concept to give us a Cyberman origin story. But I don't think it was an interesting idea to give us both of them together. It's a story that's so packed full of different elements. There's a lot of characters, there's a lot of things that happen. And in a lot of ways, the Cybermen end up playing second fiddle to all of those things. When they come back in the series finale, they are used to much better effect, even though there's lots of characters and a whole other group of monsters in that story. They just seem... A little bit underwhelming this time around. Maybe it's because it takes until the end of the first part for them to actually arrive, and the second part then mostly focuses on the infiltration of the cyber factory, that there isn't a lot of time with them before they're shuffled off of the screen. But I enjoy this story. It's a solid sort of 7.5 or 8 out of 10. Good. And the second series has a lot of solid hitters compared to other series. There's not outstanding, mind-blowing stories, although, okay, we've probably just come away from some of the best ones, but it's it's very solid. There's only uh, really two stories which I don't care much for, and... Probably not the two that you'd expect. Yeah, I am. Um, I love one story that I think you wouldn't expect. But we'll get to that in good time. The Doctor does seem to drift yeah, through this one. episode, reacting to events as they happen, and never seem to have much of a plan. This gives the story a Davison era feeling, which is probably a good thing. Rose is very good in this story, both as human and dog. Um, the death of Ricky and Mickey's subsequent usurpation of him is not unexpected, but at least it means we won't have to awkwardly sidestep Noel Clark for another few weeks. <laughs> Kimoko Jury is great as an even tartier and tartar version of Jackie, and it's also great to have Sean Dingle back as Pete Tyler. Yeah. In fact, it's a shame that he didn't take up the offer to travel in the TARDIS for a few episodes. Like Renette last week, this is a series packed full of potential TARDIS travellers. You could even try and craft an alternate narrative of Series 2 where they did all join the TARDIS. But anyway, Pete will be back. The preachers work okay. Andrew Hayden Smith is meh. Um, he plays it a bit too broad for my liking and no idea what on earth that hairstyle was. Mrs. Moore, no relation, is fantastic. <laughs> and like the Doctor, I too was pretty upset by her death. We also have Russell on Moonlighting as the president of of the UK and he seems quite competent um, so he wasn't going to last very long now the new Cybermen I like the look the sort of smooth steely coldness but they do look a bit flimsy like one strong gust of wind would knock them over and that stomping is a bit too much they must weigh a ton <laughs> and the attempts to give them a uh, Dalek like exterminate catchphrase with them chanting delete incessantly didn't last that long, did it? Uh, mm. But overall, they, they're they a possible yes, yeah. modern reinterpretation of the classic design. It's, you know, there's there's worse to come. <laughs> Mr. Lumic, however, is something else. Yeah, Roger true. Lloyd Pack seems to be delivering his lines from beyond the grave. <laughs> Surely the only possible explanation for the arch campness of his performance, which is probably the worst acting so far in New Who. Oh my goodness. And they even botched his upgrade. He was wheezing and coughing to the last. But it's good to you know see a nice father-son reunion from the Harry Potter films, though. Yes. That's always touching. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and Mr. Crane is, is one of many bird-related names in the Russell T. Davis era. Uh, speaking of which, next week we have a Mr. Magpie hungry wise and yes. an old woman having their face. Well, that stuff. deserves. So uh, I'll see you then. Bye now. Excellent work, as ever. Thank you very much. Mr. M. Right then, um, Kirby, would you do this the honour and uh, of reading out Robert's blurb? And I also get to do uh, Linda and Terry Miles, so I get to do both of them. That's, no, I'm not, that's not fine. consecutively, because I'm going to in, insert another um, piece of audio. Uh, fine. In okay, so Robert, which is okay. 
Robert okay, says that you've already read it. Huh? You said Roberts. What? What, what you said Roberts, which is okay. So I presume you've already no, read it. No, no, I'm about to read Roberts, which oh, okay. I completely and totally disagree Uh-oh. with Roberts' review. Okay. He says, my review of Rise of, of Cyber Dudes, Age of Steel. Mm. Upon first watching this, I had never watched Vicar of Dibley or Only Fools and Horses, so I had no preconceptions of Roger Lloyd Pack. <laughs> and I've never <laughs> seen either of them. Well, so I don't Roger. Know. In my opinion, then, as with now, he does seem to be playing it a bit like a pantomime villain. Even he's probably if he, told even you, if he though. keeps it low key. All right. It's nice to see Graham Harper back directing Doctor Who. Yeah. Yes. I miss chest units on Cybermen, mm-hmm. and these only have that little circular thing on their chest. It's just not the same. Well, no, you know, well, Jackie be. The has Cybermen has change all the time, so it's never going to be the same. <laughs> Well, Jackie had the, te- the chest units anyway. Ooh, Kirby! <laughs> that deserves a slight ding. And and who thought adding bloody over the top sounds for the Cyberman movement? <laughs> it's just so over the top and ridiculous. I thought I did forget to mention actually, Kirby. Remember when they were showing the or illustrating the the machine that did all the work? The the little cutting implements were on these extremely long fast moving arms which I thought was a bit silly but and, then it's a science fiction fantasy TV show so I suppose it makes if, it I can, if I can uh, say something about that set that was a brewery the, all of those circular things are filled with beer Ooh. all those fats Ooh. anyway sounds nice anyway back to Robert yes you can hear where they are a mile off with that noise something else that was silly the yeah. Cybermen conversion saunas <laughs> with a whirring saw and knife that just looks stupid the area they filmed in reminds me of that episode with sims master mm-hmm. i kept thinking he was going to turn up because of that mm-hmm. even though i know it was not until next series a nice scene with the women who with the woman who was made a cyberman it was stupid that the jackie cyberman just happened to confront our heroes out of all those cybermen yeah right <laughs> Robert, it's a science fiction fantasy TV program. <laughs> Not sure I'm sold on Mickey leaving. It seems very out of the blue, and I hate the stupid scenes where Mickey is made to look stupid by the, the Doctor and Rose. No, it's not funny, RTD. <laughs> not really a fan of these episodes, which is a shame. And the less said about that ridiculous cyber chair, the better. Okay, is that it? That's it. And by the way, that he, he's gotten... He's disliked it more this time around than he did nine years ago. He didn't like it nine years ago, but he dislikes it more. Okay. Well, that's that's consistent. Um, We (laughs) we have more comments coming through on the live feed. Uh, We have uh, (laughs) podcasting royalty. Kristen Basil says, nobody gives a shed. Uh, I think that's... uh, euphemism for something uh, and then Branamore says Jackie's chest units deserve more than just a slight ding oh go on then <laughs> and Robert Vince Jr. says they drop the delete not until after the Cy- Dalek Cyberman battle so apparently after that that's when they stop saying delete I like that I used to have a little um, uh, a room guard Cyberman used, used to be animated and used to say stuff like delete and stuff like that must be up in the I may have somewhere. to research I'm pretty sure that they uh, said delete afterwards okay right then so in fact the, the, the one where we have the, the cyber king and uh, yeah. and the, uh, the the next doctor I believe they say delete there okay um, right, I have uh, some audio from Andy, which may or not may or may not be loud enough. Well, good morning, it's loud enough. This is Andy Dunn. He's caught us on a Sunday morning, and I'm sitting here just wearing a towel. I thought oh, I'd like God. to know that. It might be a mental image you certainly don't want to oh, keep. Oh, dear. No, uh, just well. in my morning constitutional to paper shop, had a shower. My step count, if you really want to know, is 6,782 steps already today. Yeah, I'm going to do more this afternoon. Anyway, I watched... Uh, well, a week or so ago now, uh, Rise of the Sidemen and The Age of Steel, or the other way around, as it somehow came up on my Facebook page, I don't know how that happened. Uh, thank you, Alan, for correcting me. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yay. It, um, Yay. it really just rollicked along, doesn't it? It's a very good pace. I think it's a very well-crafted story. Um, the Nicky and Ricky 
course, he plays on the Joker. I, think, I don't think he's ever Nicky before, but he's always been other things as well. So actually, this time, he now does become somebody else. So does he become Mickey, Ricky in the new world? Or does he say he's Mickey? I wonder, wonder how that is. But that's the thing that works out in the world, game, it's a parallel universe where everything's it's just nearly the same, just slightly different. I think that the Mickey saying, oh, it's in my world, what we Zeppelins, he looks up and uh, seeing all differences. Uh, there's some interesting parallels at the moment, because obviously with the, the virus going on and people being controlled, and uh, if you believe a, a COVID idiot friend of mine on Facebook, it's mm-hmm. all the Bill Gates and the Chinese trying to control the microchips. Um, yeah, he's also a flat earther, but let's not go there. Um, so the thing with the, the, the ear pods now, and you think how prescient that was, because now, you know, so many people do wear these um, cordless, what, what are they called, ear pods, ear buds? I don't know what they're called. I, I wear old ones anyway, so I'm old school. Um, but it's, you know, that you can see that happening, you know, people could be influenced by it. So I think that's a good piece. Um, interesting, of course, it's the alternative birth of the Cybermen. You know, because it's just, uh, it's interesting that, you know, got a parallel universe where the same thing happened, but through a different way. Because obviously you've got these men too, you know, this mad, totally bonkers blow. But interesting, doing it for brilliant. Was he really doing the right reasons? Did he do it, you know, genuinely to try and, you know, to save himself, well, to save himself, to save other people as well? What was his motivation? And then the parallel Pete and um, Jackie, uh, Pete Tyler, who actually was success. Um, interesting though, he's saying, you know, he and Jackie were splitting up, and Jackie, God dear, she's a cow in that, wasn't she? I don't think anyone was really too sad when she got bumped off. Uh, and the dog called Rose. But um, but no, I think that was uh, Pete Tyler came into his own because you actually, you know, did see a very different Pete Tyler there. And it's interesting watching the by play with him and Rose. and. She never actually told him who she was, you know, how it worked out. But um, And, of course, he didn't go in the TARDIS, did he? So um, was he scared? Was he fine? Did he actually know somebody? I wonder. Um, anyway, uh, the, the inventor, yeah, he's going quietly bonkers. And then, actually, of course, he got taken over himself by the side. Man, you know, he realised, you know, it's not like Frankenstein's monster, isn't it? Where the monster is actually, has actually taken over and taken control, isn't it? And his sidekick, who uh, was loyal... Until uh, until to do him in and then try to kill his not his master but his his boss and then got done in himself as well. So there's a uh, quite a few interesting bits of motivations as well. Um, interesting because we've had a parallel universe story before in Inferno and there's a parallel there because in that one there was no monarchy and I'm assuming having a president here meant there's no monarchy there either. What if that was done deliberately? Um, you know, you never hear about the Queen or the King or whoever would be on the throne. So one assumes that that had gone. Don Warrington. Very good as well. I mean, it's a uh, again. I don't think anyone did, did anyone talk at the time about the fact that the president was a black. You know, we haven't had a black prime minister. I know we've got a lot of black MPs, and quite rightly so. Um, we haven't had a black prime minister yet. No doubt, one day we will. And hopefully, when it happens, it will just be a case of oh, we've got a prime minister black, not a black prime minister. If you understand what I mean there as well. But again, it's um, it's, it's things that are slight, always slightly different, aren't they? Um, as for the doctor, in a way, he's he went to the background quite a bit, didn't he? Because it was, you know, Rose really was leading this for a lot of this, and Mickey as well. I mean, this is, you know, obviously, I think it's Mickey's biggest and best story where he did it. The Doctor at the end, when he's uh, the phone that quite conveniently fits into a slot. Hang on, that's a phone from a parallel universe, isn't it? So, uh, oh, was it uh, was it the fact that everyone had the same one? Everyone had the same iPhones? Who knows? But there you Everything go. Anyway, so. anyway, I've seen some people on Facebook saying they didn't like it. I did enjoy it. I think it sets up Mickey well, and obviously, you know, we do know he can he and Pete and Jackie do come back um, in a little while. In fact, Mickey, if we're allowed to talk about uh, that person these days, really did then come into his own and then disappeared. And obviously, he's not been heard of since. Of course, hasn't done anything, has he? Um, other than that, and also, Adam, lighten your wheels. You see you. What do you mean, lighten my wheels? What's he on about? Anybody know? No? No idea. No. No. Oh, right. So that, that rather reminds me of... Uh, yeah, so the reason why we weren't on last week is... Uh, there's a bit of a sad story, I'm afraid to say. My Auntie Hillary passed away. She hadn't been very well That's for a while. Um, and it's, it was to be expected to a certain extent. She's 83 years old and she was she had cancer of various parts of the body and she was fading quite fast and stuff like that. But I had a phone call... Um, well, it's a text actually was something until at work, so it kept on vibrating. I thought, what am I, what's going on here? I'm at work, I can't answer these. And it's my cousin Jane saying, please call me. And I thought, oh, I know what's happening there. So, so I, I did call her, and she said, well, uh, my mum's passed away, but I didn't want 
Auntie Jane, uh, Auntie Jill, which is my my mum, uh, to be on her own. She lives on her own, uh, and just get that that particular bit of news via a telephone. So I was tasked with um, going up and uh, breaking the news to her. Uh, so I had to spend the rest of that day with her to, no, to sort of she was up, make sure she was okay and everything so that's why I couldn't do the show last week uh, and thank you for the kind messages that I, I've had uh, uh, since um, since the passing of Hillary who was a really really lovely one, certainly one of my favourite aunties and uh, she was uh, like the matriarch of that side of the family she had uh, four kids of her own and each of those kids seem to have four kids of their own and each of their kids have got kids as well so she she was the spawning of a huge branch of the family um but yeah she was uh, she was a really really lovely lady and uh, is really sorely missed by a lot of us so I, I'm, I'm really appreciative of the kind words i've had uh since that and mum's okay if anybody wants to know she's okay she's uh, in a way yeah. she's quite looking forward to the opportunity of going up to the funeral which is going to be uh in maidstone in kent and oh, in a couple of in weeks maidstone. in a couple of weeks time uh and uh oh. she's going to get the chance of traveling in my brand new car uh why maidstone because she lived in Strood, which is, I suppose, it's uh, halfway yeah. between Maston and Rochester. Oh, my my, uh, my uh, <clears> entire <throat> family, mum and dad, both come from, well, Maidstone area. Yeah. So that's why I was interested. Yeah. I was born in Hoosen Werberg, which is just north of, of uh, Rochester, Chatham, that sort of area. So, yeah. No so, way. Indeed. Where are I, you? What, in, what, born in Hoosen so, Werberg? No, my, my, Sutton, my, who, my dad Hoosen, was born in Chatham. No, Hoot, Hoosen to Werberg. That's, that's where I was born. In a, in, a, in a little lane called Jacob's Lane, in a, near an orchard. Oh, that, that's incredible. Anyway. I never knew you were born in the same area as my daddy. Ah, oh, well, I, I, I didn't say I didn't spend a lot of time there. To be fair, I, I think my, my, my uh, dad, uh, uh, mum wanted to go home to her parents to give birth, uh, and then once I was out, they they went back to the Isle of Wight again. Uh, right then, so uh, back to the. Um, hopefully that won't get any. That particular segment won't get too many yawns coming through on the on the live feed. Ah, um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, thought, I don't think it should. That was very touching. Yeah, uh, absolutely not. That was lovely. Well said. Good words. Robert Vince Jr. said they dropped the. Oh, suddenly that done that. Wow. Brandon Moore said that I thought there were only five people in steps. Master, you've got to do some um, feedback, Kirby. Um, well, before that. Before that, may I respond to Robert Vince Jr.? You can indeed respond to Robert Vince Jr. Okay, after, okay, the next time the Cyberman of Vera is obviously in the end of time. Is it the end of time? No. Oh, he's been researching. Yes. No, not the end of time. Oh, dear. Uh, is uh, <laughs> uh, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, right. Yes. Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, and they obviously do delete and exterminate, delete and exterminate. Yes. And I find that very funny. So, yeah, so do I. After That's what that, in. they appear in the next Doctor, and they go delete. And then uh, they next appear in the Pandorica Opens, God. where one Cyberman says, delete it. After that, right. Nightmare in Silver, no delete. I haven't got Close a sound effect for Can no of delete. Worms. And I didn't go past that. I mean, I was doing all that research during Andy. Okay, you've got some feedback to uh, dictate from Terry. Excuse me, Terry Miles. Yes. Oh, sorry, Terry, Terry Linda Miles. Yes, and well, that's good. It means that uh, the professional broadcaster gets to read the other. Yes, that's the highlight as usual of the, the feedback. <laughs> Someone else turning up. <laughs> anyway, Linda and Terry Miles say, "Strange one, this. The TARDIS drops out of time corridor and appears to die." The doctor can't get the TARDIS to restart as he thinks she's dead, stuck in the middle of nowhere. Mickey, the tin dog, opens the door and points out that they are in London. Well, a parallel Earth's London. Pete Tyler is alive in this universe. Last time we met Pete, Rose caused deadly trouble, so of course she has to go see him. And you know that's not going to get him well. <laughs> Mickey wants to see his dead man and gets kidnapped by the local freedom fighters. Freedom for tooting! As Wolfie used to say. <laughs> Who's Wolfie? Wolfie Smith from um, um, Citizen Smith, a uh, classic uh, oh, BBC Smith. comedy series. From okay, Mickey meets himself, Ricky, 
this London's most wanted for parking violations. Roger Lloyd Pack is brilliant. See, brilliant is the creator <laughs> of the Cyberman in this universe. The wheels make him the Cyber Davros, like Davros also slightly yes, mad. That's true. Uh, Jackie with loads of money. Well, you can take a girl out of the East End of London, but you can't take the East End of London out of the girl. Indeed. Don Warrington as the president was very good. Amazing how a medical student can get to be president of Great Britain. Rigsby and Miss Jones would be so <laughs> proud of him. Okay, that makes no sense at all. Again, again other words. Other so words somebody who's supposed to be a Vangler father doesn't know, you know any the of words. the most classic British comedies. Rose upset Pete's jacks before she was cybertized. I'm amazed she didn't keep moaning at Pete when she was a cyberman. Why is it that when Jackie's upgraded, she looks like all the other Cybermen, but in the TV Torchwood series, they have a girl who is cybertized and she becomes a cyber lady. Indeed. Yeah. I like that episode. Well, no, no. The explanation there is that uh, the it was interrupted Science halfway. Oh. Yes. I think that Jackie would have looked better dressed the same way. <laughs> <laughs> CCTV comes in handy sometimes when you want to pass info without the baddies knowing what's going on. I think you can say the doctor blew their minds. That deserves a ding. Okay. We enjoyed these two. The cyber dancing was funny. <laughs> Next up, Magpie. No, hang on. Idiot's Lantern, or as I call it, the TV. Mm. Stay safe and well. Stay safe and well. Linda and Terry Miles. Thank you, Linda and Terry Miles. Uh, ooh, we have one more thing to play before the uh, highlight of the feedback, yes, i.e. Councillor Councillor uh, uh, T. Butcher. Uh, we have uh, um, this. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen of the podcast. This is Ian Kirk. Hello, Ian. Rise of the Cybermen and the Edge of Steel by Tom McRae. Russell T. Davis decided this story would be set in a parallel universe. This allows rebooting the Cybermen and ignoring their backstory without too much fan fury that a normal reboot would entail. Yep. It also allows Pete to return and show us what could have happened if one of his get rich schemes had succeeded. Hmm. In this universe, Pete and Jackie are childless, which is eventually a plot point in the resolution of Rosa's story. Yeah. Jackie and Mickey get more important roles. Jackie ends up as a Cyberman, and Mickey leaves the TARDIS crew to fight the Cybermen and become all heroic. You might think they would insist on the term cyber person, mm -hmm. but they don't have emotions. Mm. When Rose gets back to her own Earth, and finds Jackie is her old soul, she cries. A mirror of the Ninth Doctor story, where Jackie cries when Rose walked in after being missing for a year. Monday is a holiday, both in the UK and USA. Yeah, it's unusual, isn't it? We are heading for 21 Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit, which here is a heat wave. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you, Ian. Now, as I was mentioned earlier on by somebody about that, that they don't particularly like uh, parallel universe stories. Now, I must admit, I, I really did enjoy Sliders, although I didn't watch all of them. And that was a, a whole series based on sliding from one universe to the next. I prefer flip-flops. You, Master, you know, that's what we in the States call a very small hamburger. What, slider? A slider. Oh, OK. And, of course, um, Doctor Who did it via the two episodes we referred to. I'm pretty sure there was an, a, another um, oh yeah, of course Star Trek um, which I think initiated the alternative universe scenario. Red scenario. Dwarf. Well yeah, but they were initially and, off Star, and there's Star the, Trek. And there's the universal symbol for uh, being evil to have a goatee. That's very true. That's yeah. true, yes. And again, Spock had his All goatee, didn't he? In, uh, Ming in, the Merciless. In whatever that, episode, that story was called. The... Anyway, Ben, you have uh, uh, some uh, or some blurb to uh, dictate from uh, Councillor Butcher. The alternate, uh, sorry, the alternate anarcho syndical is that syndicalist? Uh, how do you say that? Syndic syndicalists. Syndicalists. 
That does sound a bit rude when you say it slowly. We were oh. talking about uh, Jackie Tyler earlier and her boobs. Now, what? What's that got to do mind. with Dallin T. Butcher's blooming feedback? You said Can we talk, talk about sheds. Oh, dear. The alternate anarcho syndicalist or triggers new cyber broom. <laughs> dear 20 megabyters. Rise of the Cybermen, the Age of Steel, is of course a closely studied tract against anarcho-syndicalism with a twist. The depiction of a society that has submitted to a collective will is perhaps even more stark than previous cyber stories. However, there is an aspect this time of corporatist manipulation of syndicalism which bears an analysis... Oh, I so nearly got that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how many times I've pra that, practiced that sentence in my well, head. You didn't even get that sentence out, Ben, so I won't worry too much about it. And I mucked it up, I'll say. However, you can edit it again. As no, you normally I can't. do when I fuck things up. No. <laughs> However, there is an aspect this time... Oh, I nearly got it then. However, there is an aspect this time of corporatist manipulation of syndicalism which bears an analysis in its relation to fascism. Oh, bugger, that will do. <laughs> See, absolute professional, consummate professional, bugger, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> it should be noted, this is free. It should be noted that whilst, it, it should be noted that whilst some might say <laughs> that this story is based on Big Finish's much lauded spare parts. In fact, there's... Oh, no sorry, that was, wrong, that was a wrong tune. I do apologize. <laughs> you might as well say Revolution of the Daleks is based on Genesis of the Daleks. We also learn that one of those chaps who used to work for Davros on Necros was so keen to get the next monster in the set that he crossed to a different universe to work for those yes. uh, Cybermen. We should look out for the other one. My guess is he escaped into history seeking an ecclesi uh, ecclesiastical <laughs> role. <laughs> All in all, Rise of the Cybermen slash The Age of Steel is a quite good re-emergence for the Cybermen and a decent, though thought-provoking and sometimes emotive storyline, albeit with a slight underwhelming resolution. It is also slightly disappointing that these Cybermen are not directly connected to the previous Cybermen seen in the show. This serves to help set up the season-long plot, which will pay off on the finale, but for now, it does miss the chance to show an early Mondas-based story, which everyone must want, surely. Indeed. It does, however lead to the opening up of the concept of the Cybermen being a tendency that is not tied to a single origin, but one rather which could be fallen foul of by an inter any intelligent species in bad circumstances. Impressive performances from everyone yet again, and David Tennant is very obviously living a dream appearing with Cybermen. This story is perhaps one episode too short, as who would not want to see Mickey and the Preachers clearing up after the Cybermess? <laughs> In Paris, next, no less. <clears throat> next up, Doctor Who and the Faceless Ones 2, or Gogglebox Coronation Special, sorry, yes, Coronation Special 53. Those are my thoughts. Counselor. The one and only, very high reverend, Alan <laughs> T. <laughs> Councillor, MP, and soon to be <laughs> Prime Minister. <Yeah. laughs> it's quite interesting to note for myself personally that uh, um, before the local council elections, I had no friends that were. Uh, councillors, uh, and now I've got Alan um, out on the, main, the mainland somewhere in Bognor Regency sort of area. I've got um, Richard Quigley, who is a, a very good friend of mine, and also uh, Alicia's ex-boss, who is uh, a Labour councillor for our actual ward, and my dear friend Laura PC Wilcox, who's now head of the Council of the Isle of Wight. Uh, she was also mayor of Cows when we did FancyCon, and she actually opened she came up to open FancyCon, uh, and now she's the uh, the head of the council. So it was very good to see. Well, uh, why don't you become a councillor? Because I don't want to. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of politics. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, these p people we mentioned, uh, um, Alan is a, a Labour councillor. Uh, Richard is a Labour councillor. No, 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 no. He is the Labour councillor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm not really attached. I, 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 I um, <coughs> judge people on whether they're good friends or not. And I don't pay no attention to... The man behind the curtain, yes. Right, so, uh, what we got coming through on the live feed? Uh, I was supposed to ask there if there's any stray feedback. No mentions of sheds, and I didn't hear what Kirby said. I, I'm supposed to ask if there's any stray feedback. 
Is there any stray feedback? No, I don't see any. Where, where might there be some stray feedback? Well, let me look. Let me refresh the page. Okay. Well, you well, might while have you're doing that. Some. I don't know. No, there's nothing. <sighs> Brandon nothing Moore said, I here. thought there were only five people in steps, and that's the last thing I Ash heard from anyone. I've already mentioned that one, so that's good. We're nearly up to date. Now, I Lee, Anthony, that, Lee Anthony Davis keeps posting random pictures from Doctor Who on the 20 megabyte uh, Doctor Who podcast Facebook group, which you can join. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, uh, illegal, so that's uh, no. fine. I don't think I had, was really feedback either, but never mind. Right, Doctor Who news. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to remind you to do the news. <laughs> okay, if just for old time's sake. Uh, where's the old sound effect gone? Oh, know. that old sound effect. I love that sound effect. Yeah, I don't know if I've still got it. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> of course you do. You have everything. Oh, no, don't. It's, I've got to download it from the cloud first. Uh, oh. What? I said no. Right. I think I must, have, must have trodden on a pin or something. Oh, bugger. Ah, uh, yeah. Now I'll try that down. again. Go on. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, that's better. The volume thing was kept on disappearing. Oh, right. Oh, yes. Yeah, Doctor Who News. Um, Trailblazers, uh, Delia Derbyshire. Uh, as part of this month's learning resources from the BBC, CBBC have, uh, have broadcast a series of classic music for ch schools over the past week. Uh, ten pieces are focused on a number of works based around the theme. And Friday's episode, Back in Time, included a section on the groundbreaking work that Delia Derbyshire uh, in creating the Doctor Who theme. I'm not going to read all of that, but um, and that music's too loud, so shut up. Shut up. Thank you. Right then. Um, Do you want to explain what that is? Because there'll be a whole lot of people who've got no idea. What, yeah, what are you talking about? What, the news round theme? That's funny. What, the news round theme or the, the, the Daily Derbyshire thing? No, the news round thing. Because no, Americans won't have a clue what you've just been playing, and it is quite amusing. No, and well, they would know. They would know from years ago that it was our, our, our news theme, which I nicked from, um, from um, somewhere. John Craven. <laughs> John Craven's news around here. Uh, what a great bit of music that is. It was probably the, uh, the for me personally, the, the piece of music that associates, associates the most with with news. Uh, oh, else we got? Uh, that's it for that particular feature. Uh, we got Doctor Who magazine six five six, featuring uh, friend of the show Sylvester McCoy and friend of the show Sophie Aldred on the cover. Uh, also, also the drawing of pardon. I said yay. I thought it said ding. I thought I'd give it, put a ding out no, for that. No, I one. said yay. You did, did you? Uh, what else we got here? We've got uh, Cosmic Mask issue thirteen with uh, Rose Tyler and Ninth Doctor illustrations on the cover. Um, it says the Doctor Who Appreciation Society has released issue thirteen of its free to download magazine Cosmic Mask. Now, if you go to DoctorWhoNews.net, there's a little um, link you can click on which rather appropriately says available here uh, and then you can actually get this this free um, sort of publication good I'll do that will you yes okay um, what else we got here um, <clears throat> that's it then because it goes back to the, the the mentioning of Frank Cox passing away which we did about four weeks ago so it's really a sort of glut of uh, I praise that there's really not a glut of Doctor Who news at the moment, but for for Ben's um, um, nostalgic reasons, I'm going to play this piece of music. I begin a double forty. Me, I'm not thirty nine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> number 38, up one place, the Doctor, and I am the Doctor. Oh, if you could just hold up while I just blow my nose, and I'll carry on with the charts. You're right. 
you sounded. I was, I was like doing uh, an impression of fluff, and then you I started doing. doing, doing like, I don't know what oh, you were doing. No, no, I was doing an impression really, really of you doing fluff. Kind of like just <laughs> it, it detracted from my. And, uh, by the way, don't be alarmed, dream. American visitors. When Ben says he's doing fluff, he's talking about that's the nickname of an old uh, Radio One DJ from that, the nineteen. Did it make it sound any better? <laughs> in the fact, you explained just to who he was, who I was apparently doing. Um, thanks for that. So right then, I say, yeah. Whatever. Heroes.co.uk have uh, a, 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 a new releases of. Um, I start that again because I've got the web address wrong. Iwheroes.co.co. I got it all wrong. Hang on. I bet tick. you're going to edit that. I, I should do, but out of uh, respect for yourself, I'm going to leave it in. Um, and the fact that I can't be bothered to edit. <laughs> yes, Iwheroes.co.uk have released the uh, recent Umbrella Academy Funko Pops for the purchase of the public. So if you go to iwheroes.co.uk and you live in the UK, you can get those shipped to your home from them. And uh, they also have a, a load of other really cool stuff. If you want to visit the Isle of Wight, you can actually go into their shop, and it's really, really cool. Um, if I right. come to the Isle of Wight, I will do that. You know, I was hoping Mary was going to come last year. So if you, I was hoping she was well, going to come last year. Something happened, you know. Pardon? COVID. Yes, I know. What? Um, so I'm hoping that? that happens this year. Uh, and Andy Nunn is threatening to come to the Isle of Wight. You're hoping COVID happens this year, Adam. No, so Adam. Mary coming to the Isle Well, coming to Britain, and essentially, you're hoping to mention the Isle of Wight. Um, and, but Andy Nunny is coming to the island uh, in a few weeks' time. So um, that's something to look forward to, isn't it? Well, keep, keep him from falling asleep. Oh, Andy. <laughs> keep him from falling asleep. Well... I can't promise that I'll be able to do that. I don't. I'm not able to keep our listeners awake, so keeping Andy Nunny awake is uh, going to be even more of a challenge. Right then, um, yeah. So who won? Dot co. dot uk. Is that who won? Uh, they, they've got dot two magazine five six four. Did win. They got uh, Alex Kingston's book. Ruby's oh come Curse. on, that was brilliant. I didn't hear it because I was reading out the the, fi- the links on the uh, page here. All right. Um, Let's do it all again and listen to what everyone says and then all laugh at my joke. Okay. Oh, hang on. So Adam, hang what on. You Let said... me prepare myself. God's sake. I, I can't remember what I said. Can you remind me what I said? Yes, you said you read out the web address. Uh, What's the email address? Who, which who, bit? Which web address? Who, oh, oh yeah, who who won. Won. Co. uk. Is that who won. Co. uk? And I said, I don't know who won. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's that's the reaction. That's that's the that's what it was about. You see, Adam. Sometimes you have to make these things happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very long. much. Here all week, which, which is true. I am in my shed all week. So. <laughs> um, You're locked out of the house. Oh well. Coming sorry. soon on the uk oh, First oh, Doctor oh, Adventures oh. Five featuring David Bradley, who I'm going to meet. Now this is a good segue. This I'm going to meet David Bradley up at Wales Comic Con, who have just announced that Billy Piper is going to be a guest. So isn't that exciting? Yeah, get to meet uh, some people. Have fun. That is. That's cool. Yeah. And Billy also, Piper and her and her new teeth, right? And also, um, it's already been mentioned that several actors that have previous, previously played the Doctor uh, are, are, for instance, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, Paul McGann. I've met Colin anyone. Baker, have I mentioned? I mentioned Colin Baker. Anyway, the, these four actors I, are all... Colin Baker's been in my car. If you would allow me to finish the sentence... That? No. Because I will, I will, I will edit it in anyway. Um, yes, they're, they're doing a photo shoot where you can actually have your picture taken with four doctors. Uh, so I do hope they actually add I a thought the, extra the, the episode was the five doctors. I don't remember the four doctors. Oh, God. Um, do you know, yeah. when I, 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 I'm going to have a very similar thing very soon, actually, because um, I'm going to have an X-ray and a scan on my dodgy hip, and there's going to be three uh, different doctors <laughs> in there. <laughs> Is that the same thing? Uh, Is my post on the website? Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, so Gooseberry, which is uh, uh, looks like it's a book about um, a character from Torchwood played by Byrne Gorman, 
uh, who originally was supposed to be at Wales Comic Con last year, but uh, couldn't make it because of something called something COVID. Something happened. <laughs> Lone Centurion, uh, featuring um, somebody I had my picture taken with at the, at the previous Wales Comic Con called um, Arthur Darling. Colin Baker. Um, and Ninth Doctor Adventure, Adventures Ravagers. I'm really actually enthralled to get the opportunity to listen to uh, Eccleston playing the, or sort of starting to play the Doctor again. So I might try, try and purchase that particular title when it eventually becomes available. These can be ordered, pre-ordered indeed, from whoone.co.uk. Is it whoone.co.uk? <laughs> now the vasi.co.uk sell. Things the like best scarves in the universe. Well, I mean, it's, this is a, we're heading for the summer now, so uh, the fourth Doctor scarves may not be the thing that you may be looking to buy. But you know, winter is coming, and it might be a good idea to purchase Shut them up. for for your Don't... loved ones at Christmas. Uh, well, along with you say winter's coming, mate. We've only had two days of sun so far this <laughs> well, year, and they've both been the last two days. By the time we actually realise it's summer, the winter turns up, and that's the time to get your fourth Doctor scars from Lavazi. And if you that's really love do that, uh, um, fan fiction and stuff like that, join their blog and um, submit your fan fiction so everybody else can read it for free. Because uh, that's how we do this podcast. To be fair, we sit around for two hours. Uh, trying to dodge subjects uh, for free uh, for our listeners. My to goodness, we have been going for two hours. Wonder as much what hell's going on as I do while doing the show. No, we haven't. We've only been doing an hour. I can't see the time. I've taken my glasses off. Okay. Now, Lillian Robin no. says, I'm awake. That, that rather implies she's, she's uh, done an Andy Nunny during the show this week. So, uh, no, I think hasn't. you said something about uh, making people fall asleep. Oh, I say, sorry, Lillian. Sorry. I do forget what I'm saying half the time. Right, so that thankfully uh, we've actually just about managed to reach. I did say to Deb it might be a couple of hours. Actually, it's forty uh, an hour and forty five minutes, but it took us fifteen minutes to get started, which is uh, rather typical. Um, That's my fault. Now, I will say there won't be a show next week, uh, simply because Isabella is on a sleepover and I have to be on call to go and pick her up from the ferry because we don't know exactly what time she's coming back. So I can't say I'm going to do a show in case um, you know in case I'm called upon. Okay, so I will make sure to announce next week there is no show. There's no show next week but there hopefully uh, will be on the 13th of June. On the 13th and then the uh, 20th I know there's another one time coming up where we're not having a show there is yeah you said there was a time i'm looking for it fourth of um fourth of july not because of any um, particular anniversary of anything but uh, i've got a fourth of july is a tuesday no it's not fourth of july uh, oh you're going to celebrate the uh the filming of the, the theatre train show, yes, that's, that's exactly what okay. I'm doing uh, on the fourth of July. Yes, fourth um, of July, yes, is is the day I get my second jab, so it's known as COVID oh. Independence Day. Yeah, oh, is it? Well, I had my COVID. That's why last is it week. taking a long time for you? I had my second jab because last I'm week. so young. No one's interested. Um, because I'm so 30, young. <laughs> Alicia had her first jab last July, week. July, which is the Sunday. England are playing Croatia. Oh, but it's at oh. two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and then yes, it's Netherlands, Ukraine. I won't in the get evening. to see it. Because we all jump in our Doctor Who time capsules in a couple of days' time and go back to Euro 2020. What? Okay. <laughs> oh, guess what I, I, I'm doing on my Google Calendar? I dread to think. I, I went <laughs> to, the, to next week, to the 6th, and I right clicked on the recording, the reminder of the recording, and I clicked. Delete. <laughs> I was really worth waiting. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> for that particular remark. So, right, so it would be interesting to see if any um, any ladies turn up to join us on the show in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and uh, be even more interesting to see if anybody bothers to show up for the, the show after that. Because, um, as I Why? suspect, what will actually happen, it will just be called episode 500 and nobody will be the slightest bit interested in any number. I'm interested. What number are we on today? 498. I did oh, say that oh, at the wow. top of the show. Right, there, so... but, uh, right. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, that was like eight, two hours ago. Yeah. That's it. That, that is. Well, how long would it take if you were 
listen to all of them back to back, Kirby. Oh, God, here we go. Ah, Don't ask him questions like that because he'll get a calculator out. (laughs) Well, I think what you need to do, as you've probably got every single one logged of time and everything like that, is for the Mm. 500th episode, work out how long every podcast length. There's your challenge. On average. No. What do you mean, no? No, I don't want it on average. I'm I want work it on average. Time. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Are you not? Oh, Kirby, that, you let down. Seriously. He can't do it because he, he like, knows he can't get an exact figure. Well, I'm sure I'm sure Kirby could because he's brilliant at stuff like I, that. I, I could if there were fewer than 500. I'm not going <laughs> to take the time to do it. Yes, you are because <laughs> now you want to know as well. well it's gonna, it's gonna burn you now, Kirby. You're gonna really want to know how long all podcasts back to back would take to listen. All, to. I'm sure it's You're something gonna go to that, tonight. that uh, Master could go into Podbean and right. Get. I can tell you, Ben, on a, on the obviously better in mind, most of the episodes are between an hour and two hours long. So I've, I've done on an average an hour and a half per episode. Um, it would take if you wanted to listen to them back to back without going to bed or anything. 45 what the hell days. would you want to do 45 that? days of continuous listening. So I've spent 45 days of my life sat here, apart from when I had to do it in the car, obviously. Uh, that car's for sale, by the way, if anybody wants to buy the oh, car. Oh, those were great days in the car park. Oh, they were. They were. So anyway, so 45 days of my life doing this show. So now... What's going to be the big reveal on Wait. 500? I mean, I, just thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought we were trying. When is Alicia's wedding? 25th of July. Well, are you coming up to come into it or what? No, it's, it, uh, I thought maybe we were skipping that. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the one I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I definitely have that marked as no 20 megabytes. Well done, Kirby. That was very clever of you to work that one out. Yeah. You have right, that anyway, on your so... calendar. Yes. <laughs> I, I, no, I was talking about Adam. <laughs> right then, so uh, next time we'll be uh, looking at uh, the Idiot's Lantern. Um, and um, I was trying to think of a joke to do with that title, but the title itself um, is uh, quite funny. And um, until then, thank you for listening and watching and taking part in the show. Stay safe, take your jabs, let's get rid of COVID and uh, get back to normal. Goodbye. Goodbye, fancy pants. Chicken crisps. is an APV Services production sponsored by whoone.co.uk, lavazi.co.uk and iwheroes.co.uk. We are a proud member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 
Doctor Who is a trademark of the BBC. No copyright infringement intended.